So now I want to give another example of a good recursive algorithm, which is the merge sort. So there are many, many algorithms for sorting a list. And this is something that you need to do quite a lot in computer science applications. So you want to have algorithms that do it very quickly. And merge sort is an algorithm that does do it very quickly. I think it really is um, not maybe in this form that I'm going to say, but I think it does form the basis for a lot of the sorting algorithms that people actually use in practice. So it is a good one to know. So um, let me write that down. Fast sorting algorithm. Merge sort, or maybe some variant of it, is often used in practical applications. So the idea of merge sort, it is a recursive algorithm, as you can guess, is to split our list in, list in half, and then sort each half, and then merge them back together. This is where the name comes from. We split list in half, we sort each half, this is the recursive part, and then merge the sorted lists. This is the merge part. Um, so let's talk about that. How does the merge work? Hmm. So basically, we need some process for taking two sorted lists and combining them into a single sorted list. So the way it works is we compare the smallest element. So I'm going to write this down, but then we're going to do an example. And I think the example will be a lot more clear. But let me just write it down and compare the smallest element of each list. And then whichever one is smaller, oof. whichever is smaller gets added to the new list. And then we repeat. So let's say we have some lists like two, three, five, six. Remember that when we're, when we're talking about the merge operation, the lists come to us already sorted. It's just that we have two of them and we want to make them, uh, we want to combine them. So here are two sorted lists, and we're going to merge them. So how do we do that? We compare the smallest element of each list, and we find that this one is smaller. So we add that to the new list. And then we delete it from this guy. And then just repeat the process. Now, these are the smallest two elements. Which one is smaller? It is this one. So that gets added, and it gets deleted from its own list. Now, these are the smallest two elements. This one is smaller, so we put that in and get rid of it. Now, these are the smallest two, and this one is smaller. So we get rid of that. And then, now this is the smallest. So we erase it and add it to this guy. And then you can see six, seven are going to be the last two. So 
Um, <laughs> for the lecture notes, let me rewrite these lists up here. But I think seeing the process done visually, hopefully now you understand basically how the merge works. So um, what does the merge sort algorithm look like? So it takes as input a list And the algorithm is, what is our sort of base case? Our base case is when there is nothing to split in half somehow. When we've gotten down to the smallest list we can. So if L has a single element, then we just return L. So single element. It's sorted, no problem. Otherwise, like we said, we split L in half. To get two halves, L1 and L2. And then we return. So we merge sort L1. We merge sort L2, and then we merge those two lists. And this is the algorithm. So let's look at a little graphical example. So let's say we have this list, 2, 4, 7, 6, one, five, three. Two, four, seven, six, one, five, three. Cool. This is what's in my notes. Hmm. So let's run through a merge sort. So if this has a single element, it does not. We skip that step. And otherwise, we split it in half and then recurse. So we have an odd number of elements, so it doesn't really matter how we split the difference. We'll just put it in the first half. So we get two, four, seven, six on this side, and one, five, three on this side. We continue splitting in half until we get down to single elements. And then this is just going to going to carry along for the ride. And now, so remember we kept talking about in a recursive algorithm, we have a sort of forward or downward step, which is when we are recursing. And then we have a sort of upwards or backwards step when our recursions are returning. So this is the sort of forward step. And then we're going to continue downwards to write the backward step. So now we have our list split into a bunch of tiny lists. And we are going to combine them with a merge at each stage. So let's start over here. We compare the small element in each of the two lists. And we put that one first. And then we repeat, which just means the other one goes second. Similarly here, so the smaller element goes first, and the bigger element goes second. And similarly here, this thing is still just hanging out. And now, for each of these two lists, each of these two lists, we merge them. So for these two, we get the two first, and then we get the four, 
and then we get six and seven. And here we get the one first, and then we get the three, and then the five. And finally, merging these two lists, we saw an example like this before, but let's just do it again. Um, so the smaller element is one. Now if we strike that off, the smaller element is two. Now the smaller element is three, etc. So we get the four, then the five, then the six, then the seven. And now our list is sorted. How oh, nice. Oh, perfect. We are just running out of space. So I will not spend too much time talking about the last question. But I wonder if you can predict what the last question is going to be. What is the complexity of merge sort? Hmm. Well, so um, say our list has n elements. Then if we look up in this diagram that we've drawn, how many comparisons does a merge take? So let's say that we're just measuring the number of comparisons because that's essentially all that we're doing with this algorithm. It's just a bunch of comparisons to put things in the right order. And how many comparisons are there in a merge? Well, we saw at each, for each comparison, we add one element to the list. So the number of comparisons is about the number of elements in the list, plus or minus one, maybe. And now, what can we say about that? So let me write that down. So merging a list of n elements takes about n comparisons. And if you look at this diagram, we have a couple of different merge steps. Let's see. We have one, two, three merge steps, or sort of like merge layers. And in each case, we have different sizes of lists that we're merging. But when we look at all of them together, it's always the size of our original list. So in this layer as well, if we look at all of our lists together, it's about the size of our original list. So in each layer of our diagram, we use so let me change this n because I want to use it. Let's say it's a different thing. The merging list of m elements takes about m comparisons. So in each layer, we use about n, which are is our original size of our original list. So in each layer, we use about n comparisons. And the number of layers is, well, how do we think about this? The number of layers is the number of times we have to split it in half to get down to a single element, which is the way, another way of saying the number of times you should divide n by 2 to get down to 1, which is another way of saying 
the number of layers is about log n, where, you know, we're saying log 2, I guess, but I'm just going to leave the thing off just to be vague. So what we found is in each layer, we use n comparisons, and the number of layers is log n. So merge sort. Ooh, so merge sort is O of n times log n, because we just multiply the number of comparisons in each layer times the number of layers. So this is log linear time, as it is often called. Um, and a quick note is that this big O of n log n is actually the best you can possibly do, at least for a comparison sort, um, which is the category that this falls into. So merge sort actually achieves the best possible time. Although it's worth noting that when you're doing these things in practice, you care about a lot more things. Like for example, you care about the constants that we are ignoring when you write things like this. And also you care about details of computer science, like how they work with different data structures and how they work with different, et cetera. But the point is that merge sort um, is really one of the better sorting algorithms that is actually used. Uh, so question, what is the difference between M and N in this? So what I mean by this is that um, our, our full list, so N is the letter I'm using for the entire list, so this thing. And I'm using M to refer to the fact that we do a lot of merges on smaller things. So this is a merge, this is a merge, this is a merge. So in this case, uh, M equals two. We're merging things into a list of size two. This is a merge with size m equals four, and this is a merge with m equals n, because this is the full list. So that's the difference between m and n uh, in this little explanation. Uh, 